ambassador today and also introduce KCFR, Karachi Council for Foreign Relations uh, has been making waves uh, since 2003 and uh, why it is more important than various other think tanks that uh, exist in the country is because we are the voice from Karachi. I will now formally welcome His Excellency uh, to the forum. Dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. This COVID makes us find new ways and means to interact with each other. And uh, thanks to these new technologies, we can still communicate and uh, get in touch. I would like to briefly touch upon the Turkish-Pakistani relationship. Uh, and my plan is actually to leave the bulk of the, you know, uh, reserve time for the questions that you might have uh, for the various issues that Turkey and, you know, the wider geography faces with. So, on Pakistan-Turkish relationship, I should say that this is, this is more than a relationship. Uh, whenever I am asked to, you know, comment on the our bilateral relationship, I immediately object and say that uh, we need a correction here. Uh, the, the thing between Turkey and Pakistan cannot be called a relationship because for a relationship, by definition, you need two parties with a distance between themselves so that they can relate with each other. In case of Turkey and Pakistan, it is not correct because we do not have this distance to relate with, with each other. So our political relations with Pakistan has always been great. Uh, and uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, it, is, it is still the same uh, regardless of who is in power in, back in Turkey or here in Pakistan. We always have the excellent level of political relations between, between the two countries. As you will recall, the last high-level event was President Erdogan's visit to Islamabad uh, in February this year, just before the, you know, COVID timeout, if I may put it that way. And during that visit, it was once again clear that Pakistan and Turkey has a good legacy of brotherhood, cooperation, solidarity. And it was very good to see that bo both leaders on, on, the, on, the, on both sides, they were very committed and keen to take this uh, relationship, this bond, uh, further uh, in the years to come. What is missing, in my humble opinion, is the economic and commercial ties between the two countries. Yes, we have a trade volume of around seven, eight hundred million dollars, but given the sizes, sizes of the two economies, this is definitely not enough. We should be doing more. And on the both sides of, uh, on the board, to take this commercial and economic activity further. To that effect, both sides are working on a, on having a trade uh, agreement between the two countries. Uh, and uh, before the COVID period, I mean the, the exercise was uh, in full steam, uh, but during this period also both sides uh, tried to do their homework and in the days and months to come, inshallah, we would be, we are hopeful that we will be uh, gaining some ground, uh, meaning that we would be coming closer uh, for uh, finishing this uh, trade agreement. Pakistan is a 
very big and promising market. Uh, it has uh, huge resources and it has huge it, uh, capacity to be an important trade partner uh, of Turkey and beyond. So inshallah, uh, we will see more Turkish business people, entrepreneurs coming in Pakistan and uh, hand in hand with their Pakistani counterparts. Uh, we will see uh, bilateral uh, activities increasing also in the field of investment, trade and economy in the coming in the upcoming period. For the cultural and social activities, uh, Alhamdulillah, Turkey proves to be a very important destination for Pakistani uh, nationals uh, for their visit and pastime. Uh, we see the numbers of Pakistani visitors going to Turkey increasing every passing year. And uh, even this COVID period, despite the restrictions and, you know, all those uh, impediments uh, that we face, uh, we still, we were able to keep the, you know, the airline connection open. Uh, and uh, I am happy to report uh, to you that Turkey was one of the top destinations for the Pakistani tourists. You can see it with bare eyes that, you know, uh, the latest drama, Turkish drama, Ertuğrul, had made a huge impact uh, here uh, in Pakistan. The numbers were, you know, uh, through the roof. Uh, we were not uh, familiar with such numbers even in Turkey. So uh, the Pakistani brothers and sisters, they kind of embraced this uh, TV series and a spin-off, you know, uh, effect to, to this drama. As I said, the numbers of, uh, the number of tourists visiting Turkey saw a spike, but as well, uh, we can also see increasing uh, cultural and cinematographic activities of Pakistan uh, in Turkey, shooting some films, you know, uh, going through some joint production, etc. There is a good uh, spin-off effect uh, of this uh, TV drama already. In the present times, that in these very challenging times, more Pakistan stand together in these challenging times. We will go into deep uh, details of this, maybe with the questions and the answer. The more we stand together, it, the better for both countries, because there are huge challenges uh, that affect particularly our countries and our geography. And it is only wise that uh, we embrace those challenges, standing side by side and proving to the rest of the world that uh, Turkey and Pakistan are the two powers in this region, uh, without which, you know, uh, any design, any idea, any uh, activity uh, can find ground. Uh, we should be, we should be uh, demonstrating that. With those, I would like to uh, return the floor to the moderator and I will be more than happy uh, to discuss with you uh, the challenges, the questions that you might do, that you may have. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to address the distinguished uh, circle of uh, KCFR members and uh, friends. Thank you so much. My question is, UAE has recently recognized Israel and other countries are expected to follow. Even Saudi Arabia is probably on the way to recognizing Israel. My problem is, they are recognizing Israel without anything in return in, with, with respect to the Palestinian cause. What are your comments on this? Thank you very much. Bye. Humble personal objection uh, comes in 
uh, to that, that point. You can, as I said, you can establish political diplomatic relationship with any country you want, but if you try to, you know, uh, sugarcoat it with uh, some very uh, unrealistic uh, perceptions or expectations or commitments, uh, that's, I don't think that's the, that's the best way to go. So, uh, my displeasure uh, would be uh, to that uh, specific point. Uh, what do you think? Can this be revived, the relationship with Iran, the things that are changing in the region, the, uh, the new uh, phenomena that we see in this region? What does Turkey think about the relationship with Iran? We see I Iran as an important uh, regional country. Uh, you know the fact that there is no armed uh, conflict between the then Turkey, the Ottoman Empire, and you know the Safavid Iran uh, since the 17th century. Uh, so uh, it is our uh, most peaceful uh, border uh, for over you know uh, four decades, and uh, this is something that we really cherish, and I believe. That's also, uh, it's also the same feeling uh, on the part of our Iranian brothers. Uh, I think it is best, it would be best if all our countries, Turkey, Pakistan, Iran, focus on this very practical aspect of uh, a kind of uh, new economic and uh, trade, trade partnership. Well, my question is that, you know, to promote economic relationship, it is absolutely necessary to have financial institutions of each country on both sides. I know of the fact that there's a Pakistani large bank that's been operating out of Istanbul for long years. As far as I know, Turkey has never had their banks present in Pakistan ever. Could your office persuade the Central Bank of Turkey to encourage Turkish banks to come to Pakistan? Yes, this is something that, you know, uh, we need to... Uh, uh, Rectify, if I may put it that way. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, there are good uh, uh, institutional relationship between the, the state banks of the two countries. Uh, we should be more <clears throat> interactive uh, to, you know, to promote uh, to the Turkish banking institutions uh, about the uh, potential of the. Pakistani financial uh, markets, and uh, I hope uh, they would also be like to like to be part of this uh, emerging market. In terms of tourism, uh, how can Turkey, from your office, sir, encourage the Turkish tourists coming into Pakistan? The second question is: Gwadar is the upcoming hub for Pakistan, and the present government is very supportive for investment for Gwadar. So, how can Turkish investors come in? And I'm working on a project for the tourism perspective for Gwadar region. Uh, first of all, I should, I think, uh, commend the steps that uh, Pakistani government is taking both you know, in the field of promoting Pakistan as an emerging destination for, for tourism, uh, but also as for the practical steps, it is commendable that uh, <coughs> last year uh, they came up with the decision that uh, uh, electronic visas uh, for uh, most of the countries uh, uh, they now put in place. For Gwadar and for, uh, you know, uh, the wider uh, CPEC issue, I think, uh, as I said, uh, there is already an interest uh, on the part of Turkish entrepreneurs to come and, you know, uh, utilize the opportunities uh, in Pakistan already. I have one question to Excellency, and that is, we already talked about the commonality, similarities between Turkey and Pakistan. One area which has been agitating the minds of many people is the military's interference in politics, both in Turkey in the past and in Pakistan. Both Turkey and Pakistan have witnessed the hanging of their elected prime ministers, Adnan Mindaris in Turkey, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in Pakistan, by the militaries. And both Pakistan and Turkey uh, have seen also the military's growing 
influence in the businesses. But during the last decade or so, Turkey has been able to largely overcome this handicap. The military's interference in politics, etc., has been reduced, not only reduced, but almost eliminated. Would you, Excellency, like to share the experiences of Turkey in checking its military and in uh, stopping the military from interfering in politics? Would you like to elaborate on the role, on the model, the Turkish model adopted? This is an important question. Uh, there is no easy way to answer it, but uh, as he suggested, let me try to uh, uh, share my uh, humble experience uh, attached to it, uh, to, the, to the question uh, and to my country. First of all, I think we should all bear in mind that uh, this journey to democracy and rule of law is, 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 is a long one. Uh, our adventure with democracy officially started with the uh, 1946 elections. But even during the Ottoman uh, period, we have seen the first glimpses of, you know, uh, local administration or division of power between the legislation and so, uh, the Sultan himself. So we have a legacy of uh, a long legacy of you know uh, democratization process, uh, but it was not easy even 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 for Turkey. During these times, we went through uh, also uh, the period of Cold War, uh, and uh, we have uh, found our place in the League of Democracies uh, in the in the Western uh, Western sphere. It also, you know, uh, helped uh, Turkey uh, to to establish itself as a as a democratic uh, nation. This is like, you know, some. It's a bit like chemical, uh, you know, uh, in the earth, in nature. Uh, it is not tolerable to have uh, a vacuum in 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 any place. So. Uh, when there is a vacuum, uh, there are always uh, different elements uh, seeking to fill in that uh, vacuum. Uh, so the best way is not to keep uh, any vacuum uh, in the civilian uh, uh, rule, rule of law and, you know, uh, democratization. The question I was given was uh, any possibility of Turkey removing 27% anti-dumping duty on denim fabric and uh, to some extent 32% on garments from Pakistan. That's one question. And the other is, uh, uh, what is the possibility of, you know, establishing uh, counter trade? You know, for example, Turkish cement can be cheaply exported to Africa uh, uh, instead of from Pakistan and some and Turkish good that Pakistan produces could be exported to Central Asia or other countries. You know, we could have some kind of a uh, counter trade. So these are the two questions. One is on the anti dumping and one on the counter trade. Thank you, sir. This year was particularly a difficult year for for almost all countries, uh, including Turkey. So uh, in the earlier phase of this uh, COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, our government came up with uh, a decision, uh, you know, in order to protect the uh, domestic production. Uh, they have raised the duties of uh, numerous uh, items, uh, including those who affected our trade with uh, with Pakistan, uh, mainly in the in the in the field of textiles, uh, and uh, this initially was, you know, uh, put in place until uh, end of uh, uh, September. Uh, then the government also extended it uh, until the end of uh, 2020, uh, which is this year and, you know, end of this month. But regardless of that, I should uh, encourage all the business people uh, that uh, once we have, uh, we are back to normal, uh, days and normal regulations there are many fields 
uh, waiting to be utilized between Turkey and Pakistan in terms of uh, bilateral trade. I can give many examples, but uh, it is a it is a it is a vast uh, variety of items that can be subject to uh, uh, bilateral trade between Turkey and Pakistan. And uh, there are reasons, numerous reasons for that. Our uh, focus is uh, now uh, uh, with Africa as well, plus some practical measures, uh, which includes the direct flights of Turkish Airlines uh, uh, from uh, Istanbul and other uh, places uh, to uh, multiple points in Africa. Uh, we, Turkish Airlines almost uh, covered all of the continent. There are many things that we can do together and the only thing we should do uh, is to encourage our uh, business communities uh, to look for more opportunities in the respective countries. My question is regarding the shifting position of Middle East in the recent past, which has been taken with, uh, uh, it has been very, very uncomfortable for the Muslim world to see the shift of the position in Middle East and its continuing shift. Would you comment something what we look at it 20 years down the line between Pakistan, Israel and Turkey? As you will remember, also in the forefront, uh, trying to bridge the gap between Syria and Israel uh, back in, you know, uh, early 2000s and, you know, mid, mid 2000s. So we were very much actively involved uh, in the peace process uh, during that time. For some time now, uh, we have, yes, an embassy uh, in Tel Aviv, uh, but our level of representation is uh, quite uh, low uh, with, with Israel. Uh, I think uh, things uh, between Turkey and Israel uh, will not come to the point where it was uh, in the in the in the uh, in the history i will now request the chair uh, of karachi council for foreign relations mr kram segel to offer his vote of thanks thank you Huma, and thank you excellency for a very very uh, intensive uh, discussion and answering the questions uh, before thanking you i'd like to uh, um, talk about certain um, incidences and you started off with uh, uh, Palestine and Israel. I was in Davos uh, in 2009 when Shimon Peres and uh, Mr. Erdogan were on the stage in a plenary session. Now, uh, the, it, the audience was, the auditorium was jam packed and I couldn't get in, so I was standing at the door on the side of the stage on one side. Something happened on the stage. I was not there at that time, I came to know later. But it was something that uh, Mr. Shimon Peres had passed a remark about Israel and, um, and Mr. Erdogan got up and walked off the stage in Davos. Now, I was standing at, the, at that gate. I, I didn't really know what happened. When he came in front, he looked at me. He's a Pakistani. I said, yeah, he embraced me, you know, straight away. <laughs> I, you know, it, for me, it was a great occasion. But after I came to know that because of that remark on is, uh, Israel, on a world stage, Mr. Ordegar walked off, right? I would also like to mention here something about some issues that were raised about uh, armies intervention, etc., etc. Interventions do not take place if the leaders are not corrupt. I point out to you that a Turkish coup d'etat attempt took place in 2016. Two things happened. One, Mr. Erdogan went into the center of the storm. He flew in straight away to where Istanbul, where the eye of the storm was. Number two, that coup d'etat failed because the Turkish armed forces supported him. The, with the people in the streets and the Turkish armed forces, that is why the coup d'etat failed. Here, the coup d'etat do pass, maybe with reason, without reason, but if the, if the leaders are corrupt, that's exactly what's going to happen. Number two, uh, I would just like to point out about the level of our friendship. In uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, sorry, in 1974, uh, on 15 July 1974, uh, there was a coup d'etat in Cyprus. And, you know, because of that, because the coup d'etat was um, by the Greek junta, which is ruling Greece, 
and the coup d'etat took place and they removed our bishop makarios and tilted the balance within immediately turkish uh, uh, turkey gave a, a, a warning that if you do not uh, re, uh, restore the civilian government we will intervene within 5 days 20 july they intervened and that is why how cyprus still remains divided but what happened was the turkish the cypriot government was restored the greek junta government uh, fell and karamnel uh, the greek prime minister was came back and took over as a democratic prime minister that was because of the turkish invasion at that time of cyprus on a needed basis the second thing was must have been very interesting uh, our prime minister at that time zulfikarli bhutto was a very close friend of karamnel very close friend so he asked that time that he would like to mediate uh, you know between because he knew arbitrator makarios also he said i would like to mediate this dispute so turkish said immediately the big prime minister said yes please go ahead the turkish said yes but we have a problem this is what is the problem they said you cannot be uh, you, you cannot be uh, you would be prejudiced in this he says why he says pakistan and turkey right or wrong you cannot you whether we are right or wrong you will support us so it is not fair to the greeks that you arbitrate this dispute you know so mr zulkarni bhutto decided that this was not diplomatic i would also like to point out to you another uh, uh, incident uh, which uh, you know other than this thing that uh, there have been many inst- incidences where uh, pakistan and turkey i've been to turkey many times one of my best friends is in turkey ms zohal kurt uh, and uh, you know uh, i go a lot with my family if my, my family members go there she looks after them but i would also like to point out to you the recent uh, thing about azerbaijan where turkey 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 was supported by pakistan without any this thing that thing absolutely and that is why the azerbaijan problem was solved in favor of what is right because nagorno karabakh was a muslim community etc similarly if you look back i want to go back to the first question that was raised about the rcd well, let's go back what was the baghdad pact the baghdad pact considered of pakistan iran turkey and iraq right it was at that time sponsored by western powers far away united states britain etc today it's a reverse turkey iran and pakistan what if for whatever it is worth the friendship still exists but today the friends are clearer nearer russia and china right so it is just a question of reviving uh, that problem in the end uh, you know uh, um, excellency it's such a wonderful uh, thing having you uh, talk to us and let me commend you on the way you answered the questions and i would also not like to forget my friend told you ochak who is uh, the consul general on reconstant here uh, i remember an incident when the chairman trachi electric and there was some problem about his uh, uh, about the building where they were having lexi substation something and he rang me up and said you have no choice <laughs> i'm turkish you <laughs> so and he is right he was right he was right we had no choice but to solve the problem immediately or as fast as we could so we have uh, a long history of relationship and uh, mr ambassador let me thank you very much let me thank all the participants uh, actually uh, a lot of participants and i would like to thank uh, uh, dr huma bakai uh, for a wonderful moderation of this uh, excellent uh, webinar and also uh, the members of the board of directors of kcfr thank you all thank you for being here